Hey, how you doing? Hey, admin from PlexGod. So in this video, we're going to do PG Vault Restore. So it's pretty much easy, like the backup process, but there's just like one or two extra steps that you have to be mindful of. And the more information that you have, the better off that you <laughs> that you are in understanding this whole process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring up PlexGod. And just go ahead and type this in. Start it up. Be mindful that in order for the restore process to work, you need to have PG move or blitz configured. And in the future, there will be a PG drives option. Um, that's basically like a read only server, but basically you have to have that G drive piece enabled because there's no way for your data to move back and forth. And we're coming out with a PG express option, Vault express option, where in the future, if you bring up a new server, we'll be able to recover everything. You just got to kind of do a little bit of O authentication, your keys, log in and poof, your whole server will recover and bring up the containers that you want. So, if you're familiar with PG Box, a lot of this piece of uh, kind of like code utilizes parts of it. So it makes it pretty easy to use and familiarity is the same. So it's not like a whole different process. So let's go ahead and kick it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to six. And again, you know, numbers can always change, but let's see. Okay, so like I explained in the previous video, the current server ID is something that you shouldn't have to change. This is something that you pretty much made in the very beginning when you installed your server. Um, the only reason you'll change it is because you just want to, well, back up your data to a new, uh, server ID. In reality, that's what the server ID is for. It's just to kind of help you keep track of what you're using when you're logging in and for the backup or store process, the processing location. Um, what this is, is that when you're backing up or restoring files, uh, PlexGuide will basically use this location in order to move your files back and forth. So right now you can see that this is, it's just a test VM. But if I had like a 15 gig Plex server, which is unrealistic on this, but a 15 gig Plex server, uh, it will never back up and it will never back up or you can never restore much of anything. The reason is because your disk space is too low. So you want to be cognitive of your disk space that you have available because if your disk space is too low, then what's going to happen is, is you're not going to be able to recover your data. So, or uh, send your data on its merry way, including through the use of uh, PG cron. So, if you're going to uh, change this location, it's only useful if you send it to like a second location, like uh, I'm trying to think what's a good second location, uh, like a, like a second hard disk or a NAS or something like that. But remember, it's something that um, Linux or Plex Scott is able to read. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do data restore. Now, if you notice here earlier, we didn't have a recovery ID. So that part was kind of a pain because if you want to do I don't know, you could have three servers. You might want to recover three different things. Like Sonar was great on one, Radar was great on another. And trust me, I ran into that situation definitely with the GCE editions, which you can see in front of me. So what this does now is basically brings up the name of the server for you. So you don't have to screw with it. So you just type the name of the server, you recover what you want, and that's pretty much it. So right now you see it says current air salt and prior service detected. So you can see that air salt is there. Um, so let's go ahead and do GCE 05. So you can see something bigger being loaded up. Okay. So GCE 05 had three uh, programs backed up. So NZB Git, Radar, and Sonar. So I'm going to go ahead and do Radar. And then but I'm not going to do Sonar because Sonar is kind of huge in this one. So Radar is like 2 gigs, Sonar is like 10 gigs. So I'm going to go ahead and do NZB Git because that's smaller. So like PG box, this basically queues up, which makes it pretty simple, right? So I'm going to go ahead and press, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do deploy per instructions here, hit enter. And now it's going to be restoring the two. So it's determining the file size for you. See, it says it's 2.2 gigs. And now you could fully see uh, the entire process because before you were kind of in the dark. So with Plex Guy 5, you had the blue screen, then PG6 and for a good half of PG7 or early part of PG7, um, we used uh, Ansible. So these are my own scripts now. No more Ansible for this. So <laughs> you can see life is a lot easier because it's showing you what's in front of you. Also, this is a lot faster too, way faster. So if I was to do radar, the estimated time for even two gigs, it would probably sit up for like 10 to maybe 20 minutes. And that's a bad thing because the longer it takes, the more at risk if you get like a connection cut or anything, you know, everything just takes a mind dump on you. 
So the upside is, is that if it doesn't work or it just stops, you'll know instead of sitting here and guessing. So, and again, this two gig file in the past would take 10 to 20 minutes. So while I got you here, um, you know, please comment and subscribe and like if you got a minute. So, cause it looks like we got 58 seconds um, because there's other pieces that I'm just going to show you. Um, it really does help. And I appreciate you being a member of the community and supporting my insane hobby. And for those of you who are uh, helping me with my number one arch enemy, Miss Admin. So <laughs> I'm very fortunate she lets me work on this. Um, the reason is, is because it's a project that helps me learn, um, help others learn. Because if you go to most sites, they're very stiff, generic, and they're not helpful. So um, yeah, we're all learning together. Plus we're all accomplishing something, right? At the end of the day. So I remember that before this, it would take me 10 days to deploy a server. And that was before Docker. And that's if I had it right. So definitely with UnionFS, that that was a beast. That took me like a solid month to wrap my mind around. So it looks like we're almost done with radar. The others is going to be faster. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap this one. Sweet. Look at that. So now it's stopping the Docker container. Because while it's recovering it, it's kind of a bad thing if Docker, I mean, if it's, uh, if, uh, the, you know, radar is running. So, <laughs> so hopefully this shouldn't take too long and look at that. Bam. And actually the restore piece is actually a lot faster too. Also, we did, um, eliminate the issues with Plex with the restore. Um, because it would Ansible, it would mess up on things. So, or Ansible, I know I keep saying it wrong. Um, and then also it does not recover the cache. Yeah. Cause that was a, a problem. And so the way you can tell this worked is basically if you paid attention to the beginning of the video, you notice my hard drive is like my test drive is now like two or three gigs bigger. So just to make sure I'm good to go, I type CD op app data and I do can't spell it. Can't type today. Radar LSLA. And you can see that there's a ton of stuff here that wasn't here before. So it is definitely much bigger. Um, other than that, that's pretty much part of the process. And that's pretty much it. So again, if you can do me those things, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, subscribe, like definitely helps out. I appreciate you being a member of the community and thanks for your time. Have a good one.